Hi, I'm Richard from Drive Green and today we're going to be taking a look at public charging your electric car. We're mainly going to be looking at charging from the point of view of rapid charging to enable you to take your electric car on a longer journey. However, the content of this video is still relevant if you have to use the public charging network, for instance, because you can't charge at home. We're going to take a look at the different charging connections, different charging speeds, how to plan where you're going to charge, the different charging networks and how you pay for charging, and how to make public charging stress and problem free. In subsequent videos, we will also look at the different charging networks and how you use them individually. It pains me greatly the amount of myths there are about public charging out there in the media. Whilst it's true, uh, occasionally there can be the odd problem with public charging, it's by no means uh, as much of an issue as people think or the media portrays. Uh, with a little bit of planning and a little bit of common sense, public charging your electric car need not be a problem at all. How often you're going to need to public charge your car will vary a lot from person to person, depending well, primarily on your driving lifestyle but also on the range of your electric car. This does however vary and I think every EV owner should have at least a basic understanding of public charging, even if they rarely or never plan to use it, as public charging is what enables your EV to be used like a traditional car, capable of any journey, no matter how long it is. If you need to do a lot of long range driving in your EV, then I do urge you to perhaps get an EV with as big a range as possible. However, if your budget does restrict you to a shorter range EV, don't worry. The public charging network is there, that means you can take your short range EV on any long journey without it really being a problem. The most important thing with regards to successful, stress-free public charging is planning. We use ZapMap for this as it offers the most comprehensive and up-to-date charge point listing. And it's a great user-friendly platform and it is ZapMap that I will be using in this video. It's free to use and can be downloaded as an app or can be used on your desktop computer at home. It's now even Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible. Whilst all EVs have a, a charge point listing built into their sat-nav systems, I think when it comes to planning your charging stops en route, it's better done beforehand rather than while you're on the move. Whilst having charge point navigation in the car is useful for emergencies, the car's listings are generally less up-to-date and less comprehensive, and for the purposes of planning, I 100% think ZapMap is a far more useful and appropriate tool. The first thing you need to know is your car's charging connections. There are three different types, and you will need to be sure that the charge point you intend to use has a connector that will fit your EV. When you buy your car, we will of course run through its connection type and all you need to know. Most EVs have two charging connections, uh, one for slower rate charging like you would do at home and another one for rapid charging like you would do on a long journey. Fast charging is what was referred to as the slower rate of charging that you would do at home if you've got a home charge point. Uh, alternatively, the type of charging you'll do in a long stay car park for example. Uh, typically fast chargers will dispense uh, 7 kilowatts or 32 amps worth of charging power which will charge into your car about 25 to 30 miles in about an hour's worth of charging time. These fast chargers tend to be located in places where you're going to be stopping for an extended period of time such as at home, at work, uh, park and ride or a shopping centre car park for example. These all have a Type 2 socket which is universal and should you wish your car can be provided with a cable that fits this connection at the charge point end and then has either a Type 1 or Type 2 end that fits your car. You will need to have your own cable to use these charge points. These are blue pins on ZapMap. These public fast chargers are really useful for taking advantage of a bit of free charging as most of them uh, incur no charging costs. Uh, you wouldn't use the fast charger network to help navigate a longer journey, extend the range of your EV. Uh, reason being, it takes a long time to charge your car on one. Uh, and also, because of where they're located, someone could be parked on them for a long period of time, potentially even all day. For the purposes of planning your journey, exclude the fast chargers and just look at the rapid chargers. They can be filtered out using the filter tool in ZapMap so as to just display the purple rapid charger pins. Uh, for the most part of this video, we're going to be looking at rapid charging. Now, rapid charging is the very quick charging that you'll do to extend the range of your vehicle on a long journey. Most public rapid chargers currently charge at about 50 kilowatts of charging rate. Uh, what that means is you'll be able to charge into your car roughly about 80 miles worth of driving range for a 30-minute charging stop. There are an increasing number of higher rate charge points delivering 100 kilowatts or even 150 kilowatts, and in some cases, even a massive 350 kilowatts of charge being introduced. These mean even faster charge times for your EV if it can accept this higher level of charge. There are three different rapid charging connections. CCS, this is fast becoming the standard rapid charging connection on most new EVs, and it is a connection you will find on the BMW i3, 
the Volkswagen cars, the newer Kia and Hyundai models, Peugeot and the newer Tesla models. It looks like a figure of eight and is represented by this icon in ZapMap. All new rapid charger installations have to have CCS as one of their connections. The second is Chadamo. This connection is historically favoured by the Asian manufacturers and is present on Nissan Leafs and some of the earlier EVs such as the earlier Kia Souls. It's a completely separate large round port on the cars that have it and is represented by this symbol on ZapMap. Last of all is AC Rapid and this is a less common connection and is used by the Renault Zoe and the Smart Cars. Although the newer Renault Zoe has the option of a CCS charge port for anyone who really plans to be rapid charging their car. What that means is it's now getting harder and harder to navigate a long journey with a car that just has an AC rapid connection. So I would suggest if you are going to do some long distance driving, a car with just AC rapid probably isn't the right car for you. The rapid chargers are the purple pins on ZapMap and you can filter to just have ZapMap display the rapid charging charge points. For example, let's select to display just the CCS rapid charge points that fit the BMW i3 I'm driving today. So now we've identified the charge points that are rapid chargers and the, the connections that suit your car. So now we can begin to plan your route and the charging stops you're going to make on the way. ZapMap has a route planner tool that will suggest where you might want to stop and charge, or you can just take a look along the route that you are planning to travel and take a look at the options that are there en route and just pick where you'd ideally like to stop, taking into consideration locations, time into your journey and the charge point operators. A sub will be more convenient to use than others. There's lots of different operators out there running the UK charging network, um, all of which have different means of payment. Um, all new ones coming out are now mandatory. They have to have contactless card payments, which does keep things a lot simpler. So if you're navigating your route and you want to navigate via contactless car payment suitable charge points, it does make things a lot easier. ZapMap will show you the required payment means for each charge point you're at. Click on the purple pin and then click on the info icon to see whether they take contactless. If they do, great. There are other operators out there that don't take contactless car payments, such as the old Ecotricity network. This is gradually being phased out and being replaced by grid serve charge points, which do take contactless. However, the Ecotricity charge points are on the motorway network, which does make them quite handy. So the ones that are still there might still be useful in your journey planning. To charge at Ecotricity uh, charge points, you will need to set up a simple pay as you go app and you use that to connect and pay. Also, the bulk of the Genie Point network currently requires you to either connect via an app or via an RFID card you need to get from Genie Point directly. Some of their brand new ones do take contactless. However, if you're looking at using Genie Point charge points and using them a lot, you might like to get yourself an RFID card. I think it's fair to say that the majority of the UK charging network now accepts contactless card payment. However, do double check when you're planning your route, make sure that the charge point you plan to stop at, you have the means to pay. Uh, just in case you have to send off an advance for an RFID card or you need to set up an app. Further to this video, we're running a series of short how-to help videos to help show you how to use the different network operators charge points out there. Uh, we'll run through how you connect, but also we'll run through how you pay for each one. Once you've identified where you'd ideally like to charge, it's important to then to look at your backup options just in case there happens to be a problem at the charge point when you get to it. For example, it may not be working, which does happen. And also in case someone else arrives just before you arrive to use it and you don't want to wait around. Again, it's also a possibility. It's important to make sure you've got at least one backup option for every charging stop you have planned, just to make sure your journey is kept nice and stress-free. Make sure you plan well beforehand, make sure you've got a backup option there ready, and also make sure you've got the means to pay when you get to that charge point. I would suggest you make sure you've got at least 25 miles of range left before you make a planned charging stop, just to make sure you're away from any range anxiety. And practice, don't leave your first public charging experience to be when it's midnight, pouring with rain, and you've got one mile of range left. So let's take a look at an example journey and how we put all these things into practice. For argument's sake, I think we're going to look at a journey from the dry green offices down to my friends in Falmouth, as that's a regular journey I would take. Uh, and we're going to look at it in terms of driving in the same BMW i3 we've been driving today. Here to Falmouth is about 170 miles and the i3 could do somewhere between 100 and 140 miles on a journey like this depending on how fast I'm driving and the time of year. 
To be on the safe side, I'm going to plan two charging stops after about 70 miles of driving. Uh, this will give me plenty of range spare to go on to any of my backups. Uh, and to be honest, I think after 70 miles of driving, which is going to take somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours, I'll be glad of the rest stop. So let's set the filters just to show the CCS rapid charges that the i3 can charge on. You can use the route planner too to show the matching charge points along the two different routes you might decide to take. So let's just track along this route and try and pick where we're going to stop and charge on our way down to Falmouth. For argument's sake, uh, I'm going to plan a route along the motorway just to keep the first part of the journey nice and simple for me. Well, if we go off cross onto the motorway, sort of first decent one we get to is at Bridgewater Services, where they've got some uh, grid serve charge points there, which are great. Nice contactless car payments. Issue with Bridgewater is twofold. One, it's a little bit too close. And secondly, also Bridgewater Services is a horrible service station. So we move on a little bit further down the road, we get to Taunton. Um, there's a few options there, including on the motorway at Taunton Dean Services. Again, there's some grid serve charge points there. Great, they're contactless, but again, Taunton's just a little bit too close. If you favour a couple of charging stops, I would suggest taking a break at around about 70 miles, which takes us down to Exeter. Uh, now in Exeter, as we can see on the map, there's quite a few choices there. So if we take a little bit of a look, um, we've got a BP Pulse there, which is a contactless car payment, no need to subscribe to anything right off the motorway, nice and convenient. Also, we've got IKEA in Exeter, it's got three um, CCS charge points that will fit our i3. And obviously they're grid serve units, so again, they're contactless, new and nice and reliable. Uh, I think for argument's sake, I would make uh, IKEA in Exeter my charging stop, and then I'd have things like the BP Pulse there as my backup as well. So you've got a couple of choices. Exeter's 70 miles into the route, that's a nice point to stop and charge, no issues with range anxiety there, and probably a good point to have a rest stop. If you prefer to make uh, just one charging stop uh, and you're happy to push the limits of the range of car a little bit more, we take us down to Oakhampton there, that will probably give us about 20 miles worth of range left. So yeah, we've done our first charging stop in Exeter, we're now fully charged again, so I will then look for another charging stop about another 70 miles-ish further down into the route, about another hour and a half. And I think this, yeah, there we go, is Cornwall Services, which is about perfect. That's about 70 miles from, uh, from Exeter. Um, you've got some Ecotricity charge points there, payable using the Ecotricity app, right on the main road there, no problem. In terms of my backup, um, a little bit further down the road, and about another 10 miles on, we've got a Shell Recharge, which is great. They've got two CCS charge points there, their contactless card payment. That'll make a great backup. In fact, if I find myself as I get to um, Cornwall Services, I've got plenty of range left. Maybe I might even push it a little bit further on and go to the Shell Recharge anyway. But there's our backups. Uh, and that will give us plenty then to get all the way down to Falmouth. Obviously, once you get down to Falmouth, you've got the means of, uh, of charging, for example, at this BP Pulse. However, I will get there with enough range left in the car to do a bit of driving around, should I need to. Uh, also, I do tend to charge when I'm actually there. Say I did decide not to charge and I didn't do a lot of running around, there's enough range back in the car to do that same journey in reverse. So I've got enough range to get me all the way back up to either that shell recharge or get me back to Cornwall Services. And then from there, I would just go back to Exeter, charge up there, and then that'll get me all the way home. I suggest that you download ZapMap and have a look at some of your regular or planned long journeys just to give you a bit of practice at planning the route uh, and also you'll see A, how easy it is and how many charge points they are and in fact, public rapid charging and taking your EV on a long journey isn't actually a problem at all. Whether you think you're going to need to do much public rapid charging or not, I urge all new EV owners, uh, fairly soon after you've got your car, to go out and do an unnecessary public rapid charge. Do it close to home, under no time pressure and with no shortage of range, um, so there's no anxieties there, and just use it uh, as a practice. Uh, you'll soon see how easy it is to do, and hopefully that will take away any fears you might have over rapid charging, and you can start looking at your EV in terms of a car not limited by its range, but a car that can do any journey you want. The secret to successful stress-free public charging is planning. Make sure you understand what you're doing. Uh, 
make sure you plan well and plan in advance before you head off. Uh, make sure you've got some backup charge points planned. So if there are any problems with any of the charge stations you have chosen, uh, it's not a problem, you can just move on to the next one. Make sure you don't push the limits of the range of your car. So make sure you've got adequate range sort of there in the bank spare, just in case there are any issues and you do need to drive further on to another backup charging station. And also, when you get there, make sure you've got the means to pay for your charging, um, be that downloading apps, getting RFID cards, or making sure you've got your contactless credit card on you. I hope this video has been useful in helping you learn a little bit more about public charge in your EV. If you'd like to find out more about public charging, or indeed any other aspect of living with an electric car, please do get in touch. Please also be sure to check out our other public charging videos and if you can subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching.